So we are going to go over the, well not go over, but get started on the Merry Mice worksheet and get my screen pulled up here. So at this point, everybody should have the Merry Mice Die Hybrid Cross Worksheet. Uh, very first thing we're going to want to do when we do our die hybrid crosses, makes it a little bit easier here, is to kind of make a little key based on our understanding of the traits. So we're told in mice, the ability to run normally is considered a dominant trait. Mice with this trait are called running mice, and we're going to use an uppercase R to represent running. So I've got my dominant trait running, that I'm going to use an uppercase R for. The recessive trait causes mice to run in circles only. Mice with this trait are called waltzing mice. So a waltzing mouse is going to be a lowercase r. Hair color is also inherited in mice. Black hair is dominant over brown hair. So black, uppercase B, is dominant over brown, which we're going to use a lowercase b. Solve the following crosses and problems to determine the phenotype and genotype along with ratios. Um, show your work. So we're going to cross a male heterozygous running heterozygous black mouse with a female homozygous running black mouse. A good strategy here is as you read and you read the keywords like heterozygous, homozygous, what they look like, annotate. Write down then, what would those allele combinations be to produce that? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we have cross a male heterozygous running. So heterozygous, that means one of each allele. It's running. So uppercase R, lowercase R. With a mouse that is heterozygous black. So heterozygous, one of each. It's black, so it has the dominant trait. The female is a homozygous running black mouse. Homozygous, both the same. Running, so running is dominant. Homozygous, both the same. And then it doesn't mention anything different for the black, so we can assume that the black is also homozygous. And there's our alleles for the female. Now, dihybrid crosses, we need a much larger square. We need to set up for 16 possible different gamete combinations. So we need four columns and four rows, and I would make it pretty big. Make it easier for you to fit and interpret all those combinations. Like a Punnett square, one parent goes on one side, the other parent goes on the other side, and we're going to put down what are all the possible ways that these two alleles could be inherited together during um, reproduction. We also want to break these up. We're going to be breaking these apart, though, too, because remember, when these get made into gametes, they're going to get separated when they get turned into haploid cells. So this uppercase R, our strategy we did yesterday, was pick one allele for one trait and walk through all the alleles that could be inherited with it and then move to the other. So this uppercase R could get inherited with this uppercase B. This uppercase R could get inherited with this lowercase B. Ran out, so now on to the next one, this lowercase r with this uppercase b, or this lowercase r with this lowercase b. Now this all for one parent goes all on one side. Now we have the homozygous mouse. All of these allele combinations are going to be the same, an uppercase r with an uppercase b. We're going to put all of those here on the side. So like a punnett square, we're going to match row and column. 
And if there's a dominant and a recessive allele, the dominant gets written first. And we're going to group the letters together by trait. So all the R's go together, all, all of the B's go together. So we have an uppercase R, uppercase R, and then an uppercase B, uppercase B, uppercase R, uppercase R, uppercase B, lowercase B, uppercase R, lowercase R, uppercase B, uppercase B, uppercase R, lowercase R, uppercase B, lowercase B. Now you'll find since all of these are the same, we're going to have a pattern here. Actually, every column will end up being the same. So that will help our crossing go a little bit quicker. So all of these will be the same, all of these, all of these, all of these. So we're going to take a moment to fill this out. And if we need to, we can pause the video for a second just to let everybody get a chance to get caught up. Okay, so here are all my possible outcomes. Um, I always like to start with the genotypes, all the possible genotypes. That helps to figure out all the possible phenotypes a lot quicker, in my opinion. We talked about a strategy yesterday where you're going to pick one genotype to start with, and we're just going to go through and count, okay, how many of that type of genotype do we have? So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four. And we have our next one that we're going to try and count here. And all of those. One, two, three, four. And again, since the whole row and column, or not the row, but since the whole columns are all the same, that'll make finding them all pretty easy. Just going to record each row, because each row is different. This one is different from that one, genetically. Now you are asked on here, not as concerned with necessarily the ratios as just listing and finding everything, but you are asked to list then what the ratio would be to each. Um, so we did this in our notes here yesterday, but since they're all the same, this would be a one to one to one to one ratio. Um, phenotype. So remember, phenotype is what do they look like? So we know what they are genetically. So now what would they look like based on their genes? So we know running is dominant over waltzing. Black is dominant over brown. Principle of dominant says that if an uppercase allele is present, then the dominant trait will be shown. So in all of these, I do have uppercase alleles. So even though I have all these different genotypes, physically, they're all going to look the same, even though they we have some mice that could possibly be genetically different from each other. So they're all going to be running because every single outcome has an uppercase, a dominant allele. And then they're all going to be black because every single one has an uppercase or dominant allele. So we have 100% here that are all going to be running black mice. If you're feeling pretty good, go ahead and get started. For those of you that might like one a little bit more help um, getting going. I'm going to help us with what these alleles would be in the story problem. Um, and then that'll be it for the video. But again, if you're feeling pretty good, go ahead and get started and just do a quick double check up here. Make sure your alleles look okay. So we have cross a male homozygous running, homozygous black mouse with a female heterozygous running brown mouse. 
So the male here, it says is homozygous for running. Homozygous means the two letters are gonna be the same. It's running, that's dominant. So we have two dominant alleles here. Homozygous black. So both are going to be uppercase. Heterozygous running. Heterozygous, that's one of each. It's running. So we're going to see the dominant. Brown is recessive. So only way to be recessive is if they're both lowercase b's. Now we're going to do our allele matching like we've done before. You'll set up your four square Punnett square. Or not your four square, your 16 square uh, square. Um, and then you can go ahead and get started. Again, there's a key up here for you to check your answers. Um, I'll post some help too later on so you can check over the weekend. And I'll be here on Monday to go over it. But have a nice weekend, everybody.